Welcome to Safe Core Protocol Plugins 101. My name is Germán. I'm the developer relations at Safe. And today we are going to uh, briefly explain what the Safe Core Protocol is and uh, focused as, uh, specifically on plugins. So, uh, does anybody know about Safe? Please raise your hand. Awesome. Does anybody know about the Safe Core Protocol? Okay, quite good. Uh, does anybody know about Safe Core plot Protocol plugins? Okay, interesting. So there are lots of questions, a uh, lot of terms that were introduced in the Safe Core Protocol uh, a couple of months ago. Like there was a white paper, some modules, plugins, uh, manager registries. So what is all of these? How they work together, and how can we use plugins? So it all starts with uh, three uh, facts, I will say, and it's or maybe premises that uh, modular smart accounts will fail without three things: interoperability, discovery, and security. Interoperability, it is because there's a risk of vendor locking uh, with multiple uh, projects building smart accounts that are not uh, interoperable, they cannot work together, creating extensions for them that cannot be reused, and creating a fragmenting, fragmented ecosystem. Discovery, because currently there's no centralized place where uh, users can discover what kind of extensions can be used, like plugins. Uh, we will tell you how we try to solve this. And security, because uh, the more uh, extensions we add, the more uh, different parties we need to trust as users. So the SafeCore protocol tries to approach these three things, uh, but uh, that we will see later. Uh, currently, it's in alpha version. It's ready for hacking but not for production use uh, yet. It's designed to be account agnostic, but for now we are focusing on different versions of the safe, like 1.x, to make the development faster. It's open source, and we are seeking uh, for community feedback, so if you have any feedback, uh, we are very happy to receive it. Uh, how many people know about the safe smart account architecture, which looks like this? Okay, so the safe, the account, is the uh, core contract, and the functionality can be extended by using modules, transaction guards, and fallback handlers. These different pieces add extra functionality. For example, modules uh, can initiate transactions that are sent to the account. Maybe we can have a recovery module that, given certain conditions, we can trigger a transaction to replace the owners of the account without or bypassing the signatures of the uh, of the owners. Transaction guards are able to check every transaction and define certain conditions to decide if the transaction is executable or not. For example, we can have an allow list guard that will check the destination of the transaction. And fallback handlers can add uh, new, uh, new functions to the core contract. So if there are new standards that appear in the, in the ecosystem, we can uh, support them without upgrading our safe. So this is basically how SAFE works. Now the SAFE core protocol is introducing the manager. This is one element that will act as a uh, coordinator of these previous elements, as a middleware. We are not replacing this. This uh, still exists, and you can uh, develop them and connect them directly to your uh, account. But using the manager, like the SAFE protocol manager, uh, it, has, uh, it, it can uh, check a public registry, the safe protocol registry, that lists uh, lots of, ideally, lots of uh, modules that people develop. The registry would have an owner that maybe can be the safe DAO, and the safe DAO would request uh, some a certain level of security to list modules there, and as a user, you would go to the registry and decide which ones you want to enable in your safe because we trust them. So now the manager acts as a coordinator of the registry, the account, and the module that can uh, be 
uh, of different types like plugin, hooks, function handlers, signature validator, validators, maybe more in the future. And now there's a similarity be be uh, between plugins and the modules we saw before, hooks and the say transaction guards, function handlers and the fallback handler. The difference, the main difference is that these ones are connected via the manager and are listed in the registry. So let's see, uh, focusing just on plugins, how to add a plugin to a registry, how to enable a plugin in an account, and how to execute a transaction via a plugin. So let's see how to add a plugin to a registry. As a developer, uh, technically, you don't have to do anything. It's something that the owner of the registry needs to do, but will be more bureaucratic as you have to meet the requirements they ask you to they ask. Uh, and then the owner of the registry would call the method add module, and the module would be added there. Simple, in theory. Uh, let's see how, as a user, how to enable a plugin in your account. Here, as a user, you will need to uh, create a transaction from the safe that calls the manager that needs to be enabled as a module, like in the previous uh, slide we saw and uh, execute the, tr the function enable plugin in the manager, passing the, mo the plugin uh, address that we want to enable and uh, the Boolean variable allowed root access. This variable can be true or false, and uh, it specifies if the plugin will have certain kind of permissions or not. For example, if the plugin will be able to execute delegate calls or if the plugin will be able to uh, trigger transactions where the destination is the manager or the safe. Why is this? Because if a plugin sends a transaction where the destination is the manager or the safe, maybe the plugin will add more plugins or remove existing plugins, or if calling the safe, the plugin will be able to add more owners or remove them. So this can be done only by plugins that have certain kind of uh, access. Then once the request is sent to the manager, the manager will check if the plugin we are trying to add is already in the registry by uh, calling check plugin. Then the manager will ask the plugin what is the, the level of permission it needs. And finally, the manager will save in the storage a list with, uh, with a save, the plugin that has enabled, and the kind of permission. And then we have uh, the safe protocol manager and the safe protocol registry that will be deployed once on any network, uh, ideally. And uh, they will contain all the information between uh, or about what plugins are enabled in what safes and with what kind of permissions. So now that we have our plugin enabled in the account, how do we execute a transaction? Now the flow starts on the plugin side by somebody calls the plugin. And now the plugin will tell the manager to execute the transaction. Depending on the permissions the plugin has, uh, the function execute root access or execute transaction will be called. Passing the safe, we want to send this transaction and the transaction itself that will have also some metadata. The manager will check in the storage if the plugin is enabled for the safe, that, uh, for the call safe. And it will also check in the registry if the plugin is added there. And if, uh, if it's not blocked, if it's not flagged, because the owners of the registry are able to block uh, plugins. Let's say that a vulnerability is found in a plugin, and the owner of the registry can be notified and they can block the, the, all the transactions coming from a specific plugin. This is a good improvement compared with uh, enabling modules directly to the safe, because here the owner of the registry uh, could uh, stop all the transactions, all the malicious transactions on the other, um, with the other approach. It's uh, the responsibility of every safe owner to disable that module. So now the manager, um, sorry, 
Yes, so the plugin, the, the manager will check if the plugin is enabled, if it's added to the registry and not blocked. It will ask the, for the kind of permission it has and if everything is okay compared with the uh, information that is stored in the manager, then the transaction will be uh, sent to the safe, to the method exec transaction from module. So that's the, the main flow between, the, between these components. We have interfaces for uh, all, of, all of them. If you, are the plug, the, if you are implementing a plugin, the relevant ones would be the interface for the plugin and for the manager. So these are the ones that I will show. Regarding the plugin, there are only uh, four methods that are required. A name for the plugin, the version, metadata provider, and requires root access. Requires root access will return uh, if it requires root access or not, as we saw before. And metadata provider will return a provider type and allocation. This is because we can add some metadata to the, to the plugins that interfaces can read and can make the user experience better. Let's say that every plugin can has an official interface, an icon, or whatever, or some description. The provider type, uh, well, we, we will see this later. And uh, on the manager side, we have the two functions that can be called from the plugin, like execute transaction. Uh, it can receive a, a batch of transactions if the plugin does not have root access. And then there is the function execute root access access that will only receive one transaction for the plugins that do have access. So resources. We have uh, some resources on GitHub in the Safe Global organization, like the Safe Core Protocol, Safe Core Protocol Specs, Safe Core Protocol Demo, that is in a, in a 5A, like Safe organization for more um, experimental things, and then the deployment of the demo. And now we will see these repos here on the left. Um, in the SafeCore protocol, you will find the contract folders, and there you can see the interfaces that looks like this file that is open, with interfaces for the different components. Here we can see the protocol plugin that has what we said before, the name, version, uh, metadata provider, and requires root access. We also have uh, some examples of very uh, simple plugins. Here uh, we can go to the base plugin that has a constructor. It receives the name, version, if it requires root access, and the metadata hash. Metadata hash is uh, an encoding of the metadata and then hashed. So what is this metadata? Here we have an example of metadata that could be different with a name, version, uh, the icon URL, the app URL, maybe a description or whatever. And this uh, will be stored as a metadata hash. Now, depending on how or where we want to store this metadata for the plugin, we can have different implementations. We can have a base plugin with a stored metadata, maybe a base plugin with event metadata. If we just focus on the event metadata, here we have a constructor when, uh, and inside we are emitting an event called metadata with the metadata hash and the metadata encoded. And then we have the metadata provider function that returns the provider type and location. In this case, because the metadata is stored in an event that this plugin triggers, the provider type will be an event, and the location will be this, the address of this plugin. So the interface can go to the metadata provider function and find where this metadata uh, can be found. And here we have the enum. It can be stored in IPFS, uh, in a URL, like a JSON, uh, in the contract, in the, in the storage, or as an event. Now, to execute the transactions from the plugin, we can also see a very simple uh, test plugin. We can define or implement 
uh, the execute from plugin function, or whatever you want to call it, passing the manager that will be called, the save that ultimately will be called, and the save transaction. And then the plugin would need to call the manager and execute transaction. If the plugin has root access, then in the constructor, we would need to initialize this to true. And then in the execute root access transaction from plugin function, passing the same data, instead of calling the method execute transaction, you would need to call the execute root access. So uh, you can find us on Twitter. We have some docs, Discord, a forum. Also, uh, we would very uh, welcome your feedback regarding this talk, if you find it useful or not, and regarding the SafeCore protocol as well. Uh, we have some bounties for this weekend. Feel free to check them in the, in the ETH Global dashboard. And thank you very much.